Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to learn on subtopic 10.7 which is on the human lymphatic system. Still comes under transport of humans and animals. So be ready with your paper and pen as usual. Take notes and let's do this. Okay, now let's look at the learning standards for this subtopic. The first is you must be able to synthesize the process of formation of tissue fluid and limb. All right, and then compare and contrast the contents of limb and the tissue fluid and also the blood. So you have to differentiate all three. And then describe the components of the lymphatic system, which is the limb, lymphatic capillaries, lymphatic vessel, lymph nodes, and lymphatic organs. And lastly, justify the necessity of lymphatic system which complements to the blood circulatory system, transport liquid-soluble substances, and also body defense. So I will cover all this in this subtopic. So let's do this again. Okay, now let's look at the formation of interstitial fluid, or we call it as tissue fluid. Okay, in your textbook, it's tissue fluid, so I'm just going to use tissue fluid. Okay, it's also known as interstitial, so don't get confused. Now, um... In this, what happens is that the arterial blood, okay, the oxygenated blood, will enter the blood capillary under high pressure. Okay, if you look at the diagram here, okay, from the arterial end, okay, oxygenated blood at high pressure. So now this high hydrostatic pressure is produced from the pumping force of the heart and also the high is resistance on the constricted blood capillaries. Now the high blood pressure will force the blood plasma blood plasma accept the plasma protein to cross the epithelial cells of the capillary wall into the gaps between the cells to form tissue fluid. Okay, so you can see here, this is the tissue fluid. Okay, so it fills the gaps between the cells. Now, the capillary wall is permeable to most uh, plasma components. For example, uh, water, gas, digested food substances, hormones, and also ions, except plasma protein, red blood cells, and also platelets. Okay, now, red blood cells are too large to cross the capillary walls, but leukocytes, such as phagocytes, can change their shape and pass through the tiny pores on the capillary wall to enter the spaces between the cells. So now, this tissue fluid flows in the spaces between the cells, okay, so they flow actually to supply essential uh, substances to the cells such as oxygen, uh, what else, glucose, amino acid, fatty acid, ions and also vitamins. They also receive carbon dioxide and excretory uh, products from the cells. So you can see what uh, is the composition of interstitial fluid from the slide given here. Okay. Okay, now what happens to this tissue fluid? Now, tissue fluid, there are two ways of uh, reabsorption. So, 85% of them enter re-enters the blood circul circulation at the venous end and about 15% diffuses into the lymphatic capillaries to form limb and then it is uh, transported back into the circulatory system. Now, let's look at the reabsorption of, of tissue fluid in the blood capillaries. Okay, now about 85% of the tissue fluid that is formed at the end of the capillaries that are connected with the arterioles here, okay, now is reabsorbed into the blood by osmosis at the end of the venule. Okay, at the end of the venule, and uh, they are connected. Okay, so now the reabsorption uh, occurs because the blood plasma in the blood cap capillary, okay, the blood plasma in the blood capillary is hypertonic hypertonic okay hypertonic towards tissue fluid so this will cause water to diffuse from the tissue fluid into the capillaries okay so back to the capillaries now the blood pressure decreases okay the blood pressure decreases okay when the blood flows from the constricted capillaries into the wider venules Okay, now about 85% uh, this happens. Now, the balance 50% of tissue fluid will flow into the lymphatic capillaries and form limb. Okay, and form limb to be written back into the blood circulatory system. 
Okay, the lost fluid are collected and returned through the lymphatic capillary, which is the smallest vessel in the lymphatic system. Okay, lymphatic capillaries. Let's look. This is lymphatic capillaries. Okay, and this is lymphatic vessel. Okay, and this is lymph, which is pale yellow in color. Now, although the lymph has the composition similar to uh, tissue fluid, but there are more lymphocytes which are formed in the lymph node. Later, you will see the structure of lymphatic system and you will see where the lymph nodes are. So, they have more lymphocytes and also fatty substances. Fatty substances from the lacteal. If you remember chapter 9 uh, on digestion, you know the structure of villus where they have the lacteal. Okay, so that is part of the lymphatic system. Now, so these fatty substances are more than what is found in the tissue fluid. Okay, now, lymph will be returned to the circulatory system through the subclavian vein at the shoulder. Okay, now, let's look at the differences between lymph and tissue fluid. This diagram you can find in page 190 from your textbook. Okay, so the difference is that the lymph has higher content of fat and fat-soluble substances. They have high content of lymphocytes compared to the tissue fluid. Okay, now, lymph and the blood... What is the similarities is that both have all plasma, uh, contents of plasma such as nutrients, hormone, enzymes, cellular waste and so on. But limb does not contain plasma protein, erythrocytes and platelet. They are just too large to go through the uh, capillary walls of the blood vessels. So, but in the blood, we have all that. Okay, so go through these uh, differences and take note. Okay, these are also other comparison of blood plasma and tissue fluid and also the lip. Okay, where the location of blood plasma, where is blood plasma? Okay, it's all the same. It's just that the location is different, so the name changes. Now, blood plasma is inside the blood vessel. Tissue fluid is bathing the cell when it release, when it when it flows out from the when the blood plasma flows out from the capillaries, so it becomes tissue fluid. When the tissue fluid enters the lymphatic vessels, it becomes lip. But it's all the same thing. It's just that the content of it is a little bit different. Okay, and then what is the composition of these three uh, fluids? So, blood plasma has water, proteins, glucose, salt, hormones, amino acid, and so on. They even have the red blood cell, white blood cells, and platelets. But tissue fluid, they have very little protein. Okay, otherwise they are similar to blood plasma. There are oxygen, there are also only white blood cells. No red blood cells, no platelets. Okay, lymph, there are more protein than tissue fluid, but they are less than plasma. So they have more lipids. Otherwise, they are just similar to both of them, plasma and also the tissue fluid. They have no oxygen, but they have white blood cells present. Okay, no red blood cells and platelets only. So that's why they are yellowish in color. Okay, now the transport, how is the transport for blood plasma? Blood pressure forces the fluid through the capillary at the atrial end. Okay, so osmosis will return the fluid at the venous end of the capillary. But tissue fluid from the capillary under pressure and returned by osmosis to the capillary, about 90%, 85%, and another 15% is to the limb. So now the limb is from, transport is from the tissue fluid by the drainage under pressure as well. Okay, so just go through the differences and you will get, uh, you know, you can know the differences between all these three fluids. Okay, let's look at the components of the lymphatic system. So we'll go through the capillaries, vessel, the lymphatic ducts, the nodes, and the lymphatic organs. So let's go through one by one. Now, the capillaries first. They are the tiny vessel with date egg. Okay, they are located in spaces between the cell next to the blood capillaries, capillaries and they have a wall of thickness uh, of one endothelial cell. Okay, very thin. They have valves okay, to ensure the lymph flows in one direction. The lacteal, which is in the villus, they transport lipids. Okay, now vessel. Let's look at the lymphatic vessel. Lymphatic vessel receive lymph from lymphatic capillaries. Okay, you can see the lymphatic vessel from the picture there. They are larger diameter than the capillaries. They also have valves. Now, the lymphatic ducts. Okay, the lymphatic ducts are larger lymphatic vessel that channels the lymph to the blood circulation through the subclavian vein. So, if you can see in the picture here, we have the, the left subclavian vein and the right subclavian vein, both at the shoulder area. Okay. 
and we have the right lymphatic duct and also the thoracic duct. Okay, now there are two types of uh, lymphatic ducts as I've mentioned. The thoracic duct is connected to the left subclavian vein and the right lymphatic duct is connected to the right subclavian vein. Okay, now let's look at the lymph nodes. Okay, you can see in the picture, okay, this tiny uh, lumps here. These are all the lymph nodes. Okay, the lymph nodes are small lumps along the lymphatic vessel. Now, each uh, node contains a fibrous network and irregular vessels that actually act as filter to filter and eliminate any bacteria or foreign material. They have two types of leukocytes, the white blood cells are. Uh, which is the phagocytes for phagocytosis and lymphocytes to produce antibodies. Okay, they are, they are abundant in the neck, armpits and thigh. But if it is infected, it will actually swell up. Okay. Okay, now let's look at the organs. Now, here we have all the organs in the lymphatic system. Let's look at the first one, which is spleen. Spleen is the largest lymphatic organs. Okay, so it produces lymphocytes that filter the blood by trapping the pathogens and also foreign materials. It also stores red blood cells, and you know when the red blood cells reaches its lifespan, it will destroy the damaged red blood cells and destroy the red blood cells. Okay, now let's look at tonsils. Okay, these are tonsils. Tonsils is a small clump of lymphatic tissue around the pharynx. Okay, it helps to filter lymph and also trap pathogens and foreign materials from the throat, mouth and nose. Okay, now look at thymus gland. Okay, we have the thymus gland here. Uh, this is the thymus gland. Okay, which produces white blood cells. Okay, up Appendix is, doesn't play much role, but it actually plays a small role in a body defense system and it contains uh, lymphatic vessels and also lymphatic tissues. Okay, and then we have the bone marrow. Okay, bone marrow is very important because it produces white blood cells, especially a lymphocyte, which actually helps in the uh, fighting the pathogens. Okay, lymph nodes we have seen just now, uh, so no problem with that. Okay. Okay, let's look at the relationship between the blood circulatory system and the lymphatic system. Now, the thoracic duct would deliver its condensed into the left subclavian vein, while the right lymph lymphatic duct will transport the lymph into the right subclavian vein. So, the lymph collected from the whole body will flow back into the blood circulatory system. All right, so the flow of lymph begins in the lymphatic capillaries. The interstitial fluid drains it into the lymphatic system. Then the lymph flows into the larger lymphatic vessel and then into two large collecting ducts. And then the right one goes to the right subclavian vein. The thoracic duct will transport the lymph into the left subclavian vein. So it is actually part of the circulatory system, as you can see in the diagram in the slide. All right. Okay, let's look at the necessity of lymphatic system. Now, uh, this is uh, from your textbook. So, the lymphatic system actually complements the blood circulatory system. It actually returns the excess tissue fluid in the intercellular spaces into the blood flow. So, the composition pressure and the volume of blood are maintained at normal range. It also helps in body defense where the lymph node will produce and store lymphocytes that are involved in production of the antibodies. And then, transport of fat soluble substances okay which diffuses into the lacteal of the villus of the small intestine okay and the lacteals are lymphatic capillaries then lipid droplets are transported into the thoracic duct in the blood circulatory system through the left subclavian bead so it actually complements the blood circulatory system it helps to return all nutrients to be reabsorbed back by the blood capillaries okay Okay, so we are done with that. So now, as usual, go and do formative practice 10.7. Okay, the questions are like uh, name two main lymphatic vessels. 
Yeah, you know that. This is from page 192, by the way. Okay, state three main function of the lymphatic system. All right, say, state the differences between the composition of blood plasma, tissue fluid, and heat. Yes, the diagram just now, the table just now is going to tell you all that. Now, okay, um, after eating fatty food, the number of lipid molecules in the lymph increases by 1%. Why? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you have to think a bit, but I think you know the answer. If you know the concept of lymphatic system, okay, and the lymph, the content of lymph, you can answer this question. All right? So, with Okay, with that, I will end my video here. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye.